Welcome back to the third session of the day. We have with us Dr. Tosip Divan, and he would continue talking about uh, neural networks. In fact, the special neural networks as convolution neural networks. Uh, he would be first discussing about the technical aspects of CNN, and then he would uh, take you to the implementation of CNN. Dr. Divan, can we start? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, sir. So your uh, screen is visible. Thank you so much. You Thank may you. start. Okay. Hey, good afternoon, all. So uh, today uh, we are going to discuss a uh, very important deep neural network that is convolutional neural networks. So in today's lecture, uh, first of all, we will see the various architectural design or various architectural layers uh, that belongs to convolutional neural networks, such as the convolutional layer, pooling layer, then our dense layer, and the various uh, nonlinear activation function that is employed in convolutional and fully connected layers. And followed by, we will see some of the pre-trained CNN, such as VGG, LXNet, Google Net architecture, and what is the intuition behind those architecture? And then we will see a demo like how can we build a convolutional neural network in TensorFlow as well as in Keras. Okay, first of all, uh, see, this is just a, a basic skeleton of any neural networks. So this is considered as an input layer. Some hidden layers are there, first hidden layer, second hidden layer, and then this is the output layer. Uh, this is a fully connected uh, neural network because a neuron in any layer is connected to all the neurons in the previous layer. Okay. Sometimes input is also considered as a separate layer, and uh, in some of the literature, you may find that input is not considered as a separate layer. So depending on whether the input is considered as a separate layer or not considered as a separate layer, this can be considered as a three layer or four layer neural network respectively. This is just an example like uh, uh, if we want to apply or if we want to implement this handwritten digit recognition with the help of neural network, then basically this is given as input. So one grayscale image is given as input. Suppose the size of that image is 28 cross 28. So this 28 cross 28 uh, pixel values are given as input. Then this is one hidden layer. And finally, this is the output layer, which computes the probability of whether the hand return digit is of one, whether the hand return digit is of uh, two, three, four, and so on. Okay. Now, uh, let us try to understand the intuition behind deep learning, like from where uh, we are going to or uh, towards deep learning, like uh, why, why there is a necessity of deep learning. So just look at this. Suppose one problem is there uh, that we carry in the previous, uh, in the previous slide also, that uh, suppose we want to detect or identify whether the input image that is provided to us is a facial image or not. Okay. Now, this is our final output in terms of yes or no, we want output. Suppose if it is zero, then it is not a face image. And if it is one, then it is just a face image. Now see, this is a problem. This problem is further broken up into several sub problems. Like what are the various characteristics of a face? Like there should be an eye in the top left. There should be an eye in the top right. Moreover, there should be a nose in the middle and there is a mouth at the bottom and some hairs on top. So these are considered as a sub problems of these problems. Now we calculate the or we compute the output of this sub problem. We compute the output of second sub problem and so on. Depending on the answer of all these sub problems, we will accumulate all these answer and then finally we can conclude whether the image provided to us is a face image or not. Just consider this in terms of neural networks. Okay. 
so this input is just an input these sub problem can be considered as a neuron so first second third likewise fifth neuron five neurons are there this neuron is responsible for detection of an eye in the top left similarly this neuron is responsible for detection of an eye in the top right likewise now this is a three layer neural network first time we cannot direct predict whether whether the part of the image that is provided to us belongs to an eye that is there in the top left now what you will do this sub problem is further broken up into several sub problems likewise this problem was broken up into these sub problems similarly this sub problem is further divided into several some more sub problems this is known as recursive decomposition of the sub problems just look at this now so this is a phase okay so this is a problem and these are the characteristics of the phase now just consider this sub problem i in the top left what could be the various characteristics or various features of an i just see is there an i in the top left this was previously as a sub problem this sub problem is further broken up into some more problems so these are the characteristics of an i like so there should be some eyebrow eyelashes and iris based on these three features we can conclude that okay this is an image of an i fine ultimately what is happening over here in the previous one this slide it is divided into or this sub problem is divided into three sub problems similarly this sub problem is once again broken up into several sub problems and likewise all the sub problems that is there in this layer is further divided into several sub problems and ultimately in the context of neural network what we are doing we are just inserting one more layer of neuron over here so broadly we can say that the three layer neuron neural network is getting transformed into a four layer neural network three layer neural network is getting transformed to a four layer neural network now what will happen once again we will consider this sub problem these sub problems are further broken up into several some more problems so basically the network is getting deeper and deeper from here the notion of deep learning is coming into picture okay now where this deep learning is lying into this uh, super space of ai and machine learning so we can consider that machine learning is a subset of ai and deep learning is further a subset of the machine learning algorithm only one point that should be noted here as we move from ai to ml and ml to real the size of the data is getting increased okay like if you are having a very huge data set then only you should apply deep learning algorithm if the data is not so much big then you can go for some traditional machine learning algorithm otherwise you can go with the ai algorithm deep learning is getting a huge popularity because of these three reasons first one the huge amount of data that is generated day by day another thing is that the improvement in in the computational technology the computing for the computing technology a lot like of multi core many core architectures and gpu architectures are available to process that intensive compute of the data that is generated from this first point and success story of deep learning in various domains such as deep learning is not only used in vision or in language it is used in some other field also such as wind estimation and forecasting and lot many areas are there in which deep learning is performing tremendously well okay that's why we go for this deep learning and uh, we just apply deep learning in various other applications also there are various kind of deep learning models such as convolutional neural networks then recurrent neural network the architectural successor of rnn is there such as lstm and gru 
then some deep belief networks are there then auto encoders are there so this is the content of the today's presentation basically uh, just focusing on convolutional neural networks now we just start uh, with the journey of this convolutional neural network so it can be uh, defined as just a deep neural network it is basically used for the automatic feature extractor and classifier previously what was happening with machine learning algorithms in machine learning algorithms we had to rely on the handcrafted feature engineering which is not the case with deep learning architectures in deep learning architecture the manual feature extraction or feature selection process can be bypassed with the help of by inserting one more layer or a many more layers of neural networks okay so basically it is adopted for the two dimensional image data but uh, this is not also mandatory requirement nowadays it is applicable for one dimensional data also and for multi dimensional data also generally it is applied on the image and easier to train and test because if we compare the convolutional neural network then it is having a lesser number of parameter as compared to its counterpart fully connected or dense neural networks because in dense uh, neural network one neuron is connected to all the neurons in the previous layer however in convolutional neural network a neuron is connected to only a local region of the previous layer uh, application domain of cnn is also very high but uh, we just uh, uh, mention here some of the uh, Field in which uh, CNN is performing uh, very well. The first one is computer vision. So in vision, we can consider these type of classification problem like image classification or recognition of images, uh, then object detection, segmentation, classification. All these problems comes under the category of computer vision, wherein CNN and its architectural successor are performing very well. Another application of this CNN is uh, it is employed for the NLP task also. Okay, now NLP task means uh, suppose we consider the example such as this sentiment analysis. If uh, one text is given to us and we are interested in finding out the associated sentiment with that text, whether the associated sentiment is positive, negative, or neutral, this is considered as a coarse grain classification. However, if we are interested in finding out the uh, sentiment, whether it is very positive, positive, neutral, negative, or very negative, okay, so this type of classification is known as fine grain classification. Similar problem related to sentiment analysis is known as emotion detection, wherein we extract the associated emotions with that particular input. It may be sorrow, it may be disgust, or it may be joy, pain, okay. So these are the emotions and we need to extract the associated emotion from the input. The input emotion from input. The information. What does it mean? Suppose uh, if we are given an actual input, so only single modality is involved here. Okay. However, if one video is given, okay, in this particular video, uh, one audio is also there associated with this particular video. Moreover, some transcript is also running there. Okay. Now see here, audio modality is also there, visual modality is also present in this input. Moreover, textual modality is also there in the form of transcript. Okay, so we need to process each and every modality with the help of the CNN. And finally, we need to apply some sort of weighted classifier or ensemble sort of architecture to just determine whether the emotion is uh, belongs to sorrow or emotion belongs to joy or emotion belongs to any other uh, emotions okay one more uh, interesting applications of this convolutional neural network is in this uh, sarcasm detection like suppose if you want to detect the inherent negativity in any particular sentence then this type of uh, example is known as sarcasm and uh, we need to detect sarcasm with the help of cnn uh, if we take one example of a sarcastic sentence such as the movie was so good that I left in the uh, interval itself. Okay, so this is uh, looking uh, by looking at this particular sentence, one may think that okay, this is a positive sentence, but the inherent negativity or some bitterness is associated with this sentence. 
this type of sentence is known as sarcastic sentence and we need to detect the inherent negativity in the form of presence of sarcasm in that input now see the intuition uh, behind this architecture consider that this input is given to us after this input we apply one convolutional neural networks the new in the convolutional neural net activated using this architecture or using this non linear activation function relu which is known as rectified linear unit after that uh, uh, we just apply down sampling okay down sampling means we expect the important features and we just ignore the uh, non important features over here then uh, see one more convolution operation is there then one more activation function is there which is once again relu then one more pooling layer is there so this convolutional followed by pooling is considered as a one unit and it is considered as the first convolutional layer okay then the second uh, ensemble convolution plus pooling is known as second convolution operation lastly some more fully connected layers are there so before this uh, one flatten layer is there so the task of flatten layer is what is to just convert the volume into a vector converting a volume into a vector is the task of flatten layer some more fully connected layers are there and last layer is the softmax which compute the probabilities like the probability whether the input image is a car image probability that the input image is a image probability and so on such that summation of all these probability is equal to 1 okay so basically it is a classification problem now two parts are there in this entire problem one is feature extraction and second one is classification so basically convolutional neural network is used for the feature extraction so these extracted features are provided to this fully connected dense neural network and these fully connected or dense neural network perform the task of classification on the extracted features just look at this over here we are not uh, telling uh, anything to this particular architecture like which feature is important which feature is not important how you can apply down sample and all so all these process is is accomplished automatically by the help of these layers this convolutional layer this pooling layer okay so that's why this is considered as a automatic feature extractor because here we are not telling to the architecture like which feature is important which feature is not important so this is just an example of cnn one more example once again we will take 100 digit so see here this is 102 now we need to identify whether the input is of two or belongs to a uh, hundred and digit 3 or belongs to hundred and digit 4 and so on okay after that once again you apply some more convolutional layers okay see here this is the first convolutional layer then first pooling okay this is considered as a one convolutional layer then second convolutional layer and one more pooling this is considered as a second convolutional layer after that one more fully connected layers are there and lastly the softmax now just look at this if you look at this neuron which is present in this layer this neuron is connected to only a local region of the previous layer okay this neuron or these weights just cascaded over here over the input okay and finally it computes the different types of output that we will see how the, this computation will take place and but here uh, you just need to understand that here 5 plus 5 convolution is applied over here this kernel is also known as filter it is also known as receptive fields okay and on this 24 cross 24 we just apply 2 cross 2 max pooling okay that uh, after that what is happening this 24 cross 24 is getting converted into 12 cross 12 once again we apply 5 cross 5 filter here we are applying n2 such filters previously we are applying n1 such filters here also we are applying n2 such filters after that this 8 cross 8 is getting transformed to 2 uh, 4 cross 4 if we apply max pool of size 2 cross 2 with a stride 2 then this is flatten 
then this is fully connected layer and last softmax. Just look at this, this architecture and this architecture. Fine. One more thing. Generic architecture. What is the general architecture of CNN? Then first of all, input is provided to us. Okay. This input uh, on this particular input, we apply some convolutional neural networks. Just look at this, this feature map. First feature map, second feature map, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay. After that, we apply max pooling. Max pooling extract the dominating features and ignore the non-important features. Then one more convolutional layers. Then after that, one more fully connected. Uh, sorry, one pooling from full uh, and this. So if we look at this generic calculation of or generic architecture of CNN, input is there. After this input, operation is there. Conventional layer. So this is represented by this con. Okay. Neuron present in this convolutional layer are generally activated with the help of ReLU activation function. So convolutional followed by ReLU. This architecture, convolutional followed by ReLU, is repeated several uh, number of times. After repeating this convolutional followed by ReLU, we use pooling layer, but it is optional. We may use, we may not use. Okay. Now pooling, pooling is optional. See this entire architecture from this bracket to this bracket. Convolutional followed by ReLU multiplied by I times is uh, followed by pooling, which is optional. This entire architecture is repeated J times. After that, some more fully connected layers are there. These fully connected layers are further activated with the help of ReLU. This architecture is repeated k times. After that, one more fully connect, some more fully connected layers are there, which is repeated l times. Here, i, j, k, and l. These are simply integers. These are simply integers. What you can observe over here from this figure and from this figure. What is the observation from this architecture and this architecture? See here, these many filters are applied over here. In the next convolutional operation, these many filters are applied. Okay. Here also, these many filters are applied. In the first convolutional layer, in the second convolutional layer, these many filters are applied. Okay. Outputs of applying a filter is cascaded in the Z direction. Here, we can notice that the number of filters in the successive convolutional operation is getting increased. So what could be the probable reason behind it? Probable reason is that generally filter is applied for detection of some specific kind of uh, part of the input. Just we consider as example, like suppose if we are interested in detection of a horizontal edge. Okay. So for detection of horizontal edge, we apply one more filter. Okay. For detection of vertical edge, we apply another filter. Just assume that we are applying two filters in the first convolutional layer one filter is responsible for detection of horizontal edge in the input second filter is responsible for detection of vertical edge in the input okay so two features uh, two filters are applied now just assume that or just imagine with the help of one horizontal line and with the help of one vertical line how many combinations are possible one combination is this l shape Second combination is inverted L shape. Third combination is reverse L shape. And fourth combination is reverse inverted L shape. What you can conclude in the second convolution operation, the number of possibilities are getting increased. Previously, it was only two detection of horizontal edge, detection of vertical edge. But in the subsequent layer, the number of combinations from these horizontal and vertical layers are getting increased. That's why here we need to apply more filters in the, subse in the sub uh, subsequent or consecutive convolutional layers. Now come back to this uh, generic architecture once again. Here, convolutional followed by ReLU is repeated i times. Okay. Thing is optional. Can you tell me the value of i, j, k, and l in this architecture? See here, convolutional followed by ReLU is repeated i times. Is it like that in this figure? Only convolutional are repeated? No. 
it would happen when after this convolutional layer one once definitely convolutional layer two is there instead of pulling one then convolutional layer three is there like that if it is like that then it is considered as a convolutional followed by ray two is repeated three okay but here convolutional followed by ray two is just repeated one times then pulling is there so definitely pulling is there then this convolutional followed by pu pulling convolutional followed by pulling this architecture is repeated two times this is one time just look at the cursor and this is second time so the value of i is equal to 1 the value of j is equal to 2 is it clear then You will see the various architectural layers in detail. Like uh, previously, we have just uh, got this intuition like what is convolutional layer, what is pooling layer. Now we will see each and every layer and the computation related to each and every layer in detail. First, very first layer is convolutional layer. Look at this. It is just a very first uh, layer to extract the features from the input. Okay, then it is just a mathematical operation. Basically, what you are doing, you are applying a filter in terms of weights to on this particular input. And what you are doing in uh, convolution operation, ultimately, the element-wise multiplications are taking place, and lastly, all these multiplications are get added, and then we compute the respective output. So basically, uh, you will get this clear idea when you will see the animation of this in the next slide. It computes the output of a neuron that are connected to local region in the input. Uh, after that, yeah, it computing a uh, element wise product and then summation of all these multiplications. Basically, aim of this convolutional layer is converting an input volume to an output volume. What will be the shape and size of the output volume? It is decided by the various hyperparameters that we will see later. Meanwhile, one question is there. Okay, so. Uh, one confusion is there, I think, in the calculation of I and J in the previous one. See here, convolutional followed by ReLU is in this architecture, it is just repeated one times. See here, if this is convolutional layer 1 and instead of this pooling 1, we can write convolutional layer 2. Okay, instead of pooling 1, it would be convolutional layer 2. And what is happening in this architecture? Pooling is not there. Some convolutional layers are successively repeated. Okay. Convolutional layer 1, convolutional layer 2, convolutional layer 3, convolutional uh, layer 4. Okay. If four successive convolutional layers are there, in that case, the value of i would be 4. Okay. If successive convolutional layers are there and three successive convolutional layers are there, then the value of i would be 3. Is this a case in this figure? No. Here, no successive convolutional layers are there. That's why we just mention i is equal to 1 okay but see here after convolutional pooling is there so just look at this just ignore this ReLU. okay after convolutional pooling is there convolutional followed by pooling convolutional followed by pooling this Is it clear now? See the terminologies of convolutional layer. Uh, filter is there. Uh, we can say that uh, filter is equal to kernel or a, that is also considered as a receptive fields stride then padding 
padding is applied on the input uh, to the outer boundary of this and then number of parameters number of parameters are the most important thing in the convolution operation let's look at this now see here this input is given to us the size of input is 7 cross 7 it is a grayscale in input on three cross three. Now this three cross three filter is applied on this region. See here. This three cross three filter is applied on this region. Okay. Fine. So here you perform the element wise multiplication. 0 is multiplied with this 0, this 0 is multiplied with this 0, this 1 is multiplied with this 1 likewise. Now after performing element wise multiplication, you just sum all these multiplication and you get this value. Which value? Okay. Now this is 0. On this, after that, what will happen? The filter is shifted one position right. When the filter is shifted one position right, then you apply the same filter on this input. This this one. Fine. After the filter is shifted one position right, then the filter is applied on this region. Then filter is shifted one position right, then you apply on this region like this. So you compute this output. Question is that what is the relationship between the input width, filter width, and output width? Just look at this. Here the filter is shifted by one position, so the stride is one. See, try to understand this terminology stride by which the filter is shifted to right or by which the filter is shifted to down. So here filter is shifted one position right, one position down. So this stride is equal to one. See here input width is equal to seven, filter width is three. Okay, output width is, is equal to five. So what will be the formula for output width? We can consider that output width is equal to filter width minus, sorry, Output width is equal to input width minus filter width plus 1. Okay. If it is like that, then 7 minus 3 plus 1. It is nothing but 5. So you will get this 5 cross 5 output over here. This is the formula of calculating the ith neuron output where the where this particular neuron is presented in layer L. Then this is the formula for applying single one dimensional filter on one dimensional input this is the formula when you apply two dimensional filter as it is depicted over here two dimensional filter on two dimensional input and so on so at this point of time the formula is like that output width is equal to input width minus filter width plus one output height is equal to filter height sorry output height is equal to input height minus filter height plus one this animation in this animation you will come to notice that what is happening exactly and how will you compute the output see what is the size of input over here what is the size of input size of input is 5 cross 5 On this 5 cross 5 input yeah, you are applying a filter. What is the filter size? Filter size three. is 3 cross three. 3. Okay. What is the stride over here? Stride is equal to 1 because the filter is shifted by one position. Okay. Then you compute this. Is this animation cleared? Uh, is the formula applicable to this slide also? Output width is equal to input width minus filter width plus 1. Yes, that is perfectly fine. 5 minus 3 plus 1. Okay.
स्पेशल अरेंजमेंट स्पेशल अरेंजमेंट इज नथिंग बट द काइंड ऑफ हाइपर पैरामीटर दैट कंट्रोल द साइज ऑफ द आउटपुट वॉल्यूम वॉट डज इट मीन प्रीवियसली दिस इज द आउटपुट वॉल्यूम four things are there on which the output volume is dependent the first one the spatial extent in the convolution operation is a hyperparameter known as a receptive field or filter size like what is the filter size that is revolving over the input whether it is a 3 cross 3 filter 4 cross 4 filter 10 cross 10 20 cross 20 filter based on this the output size or output volume is determined second one depth how many filters we are applying on the input whether we are applying two filter whether we are applying three filters or whether we are applying 100 filters this is considered as a depth third point is stride by which we are revolving or by which we slide the filter whether it is shifted by one position then the stride is considered as one if it is shifted by two position then the stride is considered as two the last one is zero padding Whether the padding of zero is applicable to the input or not, uh, are we applying a padding of zero or not? So based on these four things, we can determine the output volume. Now we will going to see the exact formula. Okay, before that, just look at this padding. Sometimes filter does not fit perfectly. Okay, on the input, then we are having two options. First option is that just ignore that part, which is not valid. Okay. What do we mean by not valid? Means see here, filter is applied on the input. Okay, if it is a perfect match, like for each and every weight in the uh, filter, we are having an input in the, uh, we are having a value in the input. Then it is considered as a valid filter. Otherwise, what will happen? Some region of the filter is not perfectly uh, captured by the input. in that case what will happen we consider that part, uh, part of the input is not valid and if it is not valid then we are not going to perform the convolution operation this is one possibility second possibility is that we just pad the input to the boundaries and padding of zero is applied on the input such that we will get the proper shape so that we can apply the filter so based on that two types of padding that we can select in each of the framework such as tensor flow keras pytorch the padding is equal to valid it indicates that only valid part is considered if the part is not valid then it is just ignored then padding is equal to same it means that we apply padding of zeros and what we want we want that input and output should be of same size this is called same padding c in this animation we apply first filter that red filter and we generate this feature map okay then we apply second feature uh, second filter this green filter we generate one more feature map okay in this particular animation we are applying only two filters okay why different filters are necessary because it depends on the part or on the thing that we are interested in de uh, to detect in the input like one filter may be applied for detection of circle in the input another filter may be applied to detection of blurriness in the input that's why we need multiple filters convolution operation is to extract the high level features such as edge from the input images so if we are having multiple convolutional architecture multiple convolutional layers in convolutional architecture then all the convolutional layers or set up method for these convolutional layer parts the first one is considered as the initial convolutional layer and later one is known as later convolutional layer so what is the difference between initial convolutional layer and later convolutional layer so initial convolutional layers are responsible for capturing the low level features however the later convolutional layers are responsible for capturing the high level features this is the main difference between the initial convolutional layers and later convolutional layers there are various kind of standard filters are there if our task is uh, our task from the model training is to learn the filter and uh, 
If it is already defined, then we can directly use those filters, such as if we are interested in detecting identity, then we can go with this filter. If we are interested in detecting an age, then we can go with this uh, filter like this. Sharpon detectors are there, then box blur, then Gaussian blur. So all these are the filters which is responsible for detection of these kind of operations. Now, come back to this slide in which we will see the parameter calculation over here. On this particular input, we apply the filter. Okay. What is the input size over here? Input size is 6 cross 6. Okay. It is a grayscale image. So, three channels are there. First channel, second channel and third channel. So, the total shape or tensor shape is nothing but 6 cross 6 cross 3. 6 cross 6 cross 3. On this input, we apply filter 1 we, as well as we apply filter 2. It means that how many filters we are applying on the input? We are applying two filters. What is the size of filter? We are applying 3 cross 3 filter. Filters are nothing but the weights. Okay. So these weights are multiplied with this input. Just look at this. How many channels are there in the filter? The number of channels in the filter is equal to number of channels in the input. How many channels are there in the input? 3. 3 channels are there in the input. That's why the number of channels in filter is also 3. Now what you will do? You will simply perform these. You will take the first channel of filter, apply on this first channel. Okay. It means that 4 is multiplied with this 1, 9 is multiplied with this 0, 2 is multiplied with this minus 1, this 5 is multiplied by this 1, and so on. After that, we take the second channel of the input and we take second channel of the filter. Okay. Then you perform element wise multiplication. Then you take the third channel of the input. Then you take the third channel of the filter. Once again, you perform element wise multiplication. Total how many multiplication results are there? 27 is 9 multiplications corresponding to first channel, 9 multiplication corresponding to second channel, 9 multiplication corresponding to third channel. Total 27 bits are there. Uh, sorry, 27 multiplications are there. On top of that, we add one bias. So 27 plus 1. Then you compute this entry. Let's look at this. Yeah, I have a question here. Uh, that will all the channels be same in a filter? No, no, no. All the channels will this be not different. Mandatory. This is not mandatory. Uh, initially, the values will be same or we can initialize it by some random initial, uh, initialization. There are various methods for uh, weight initialization or parameter initialization. Later on, as the model get trained, we can just change this or uh, the parameter values are getting changed. So do we change the value of the filter or the values of the channels within a filter? Like in this case, uh, for the filter one, we have three channels. And it seems that as if the values of all the channels are different. This, suppose we consider this. Stupid. Okay. This is filter. Size of this filter is 3 cross 3. Three channels are there in this filter. Mm -hmm. Before going to this, I just want to show you one more example. Let's look at this. I think all the things will get clear from this slide. Uh, how many inputs are there in this slide? Single input. But it is uh, demonstrated as three channel. So this is a uh, red channel, this is green channel, and this is blue channel. But the input is there. A single input or a single filter. On this single input, we are applying single filter. This is right. the filter. What is the size of, size of filter is 3 cross 3. Size of filter is 3 cross 3. Right. So, filters are nothing but the weights. So, these 3 cross 3 weights corresponding to very first channel of the input. These second 3 cross 3 weights corresponding to the second channel of the input. These third 3 cross 3 weights corresponding to the third channel of the input. 
what is mm -hmm. our claim from this model for minimum value of each of these parameters see this is considered as the model parameters so nine parameters model parameters point parameter first channel of filter these nine parameters corresponding to the second channel of the filter one these nine parameters corresponding to the third channel of the same filter we want that optimum value of each and every filter and every filter mm -hmm. or each and every channel of the filters using the unique filter is it fine now yeah so is this a usual practice since most of the images would be in rgb so is this a usual practice to consider say uh three channels and the size of the filter could differ say 5 cross 5 uh, into 3 and 7 cross 7 into 3 so every time it would be of this form wherein one dimension is fixed as 3 uh, uh we can consider that uh, that the number of channels in channel and number of filter would be same okay all right thank you and on top of this we are adding one bias uh, so why do we add plus one that is considered as a bias see here generally what will happen in the uh, the step on learning uh, we just compare with some threshold okay now what we want that uh, the comparison should be done with zero only means in right hand side only zero is there so what is happening over here this threshold is coming into left hand side and that negation of threshold is considered as a bias and initially it is assigned as 1 or it may be any other initial value you can consider that is uh, just a threshold and the thing is like that we just want that uh, the entire expression should be compared with zero only okay okay sir now total how many parameters are there in this example Just tell me the total number of parameters over here. Parameters are nothing but weight and biases. Now you tell me the total number of of weights and total number of bias here. Yes, so we have here twenty-eight number of the parameters. Yes, twenty-eight is the number of parameters. Among these twenty-eight, twenty-seven are weight and one is bias. Yes. Okay. Now see this slide once again. So this is the input. This is the filter we are applying over here. The same thing. The same thing. Number of channels in the input and number of channels in filter is same. Uh, we compute the very first entry. After that, this filter is shifted in one position right. Then you compute the second entry. we compute the second entry of the first row of the result okay just look at this this one then the filter is shifted one position right then you compute third entry first row of this like that what is the shape of output here shape of output is 4 cross 4 filter is shifted one position right okay the stride is equal to 1 so it is nothing but 6 minus 3 plus 1 So comes out to be four cross four. What is the depth of this? What is the depth of this? Four cross four. Depth is equal to one. Fine. See here, the depth of the input is three. Just assume that any other example in the depth of the input is suppose thirty. If depth of the input is thirty, then the depth of this filter one is also thirty. Then also, what will be the depth of output? depth of output is equal to 1 is it clear yes that would be 1 fine see this is the result of applying filter 1 on this input this is the result of applying filter 1 on this input similarly this is the result of applying filter 2 on this input okay these output are cascaded in the z direction these output are cascaded in the z direction what is the final shape of output over here final tensor shape is 4 cross 4 cross 2 final tensor shape is 4 cross 4 cross 2 how many filters we are applying over here
in this entire example how many filters we are applying two filters two filters and what is the depth of output two two can i say that the number of filter is equal to the depth of the output yes the number of filters is equal to the number of feature maps true fine after that we will look at the pooling just see here pooling layer is responsible for reducing the spatial size of the convolved features and basically the aim is that uh, to extract the dominating features and to ignore the non important features and uh, the volume is getting reduced so that we can work on the reduced volume intuition or intuition is extraction of dominating features two types of poolings are there max pooling and average pooling other type of poolings are also there but these two are the uh, mostly used max pooling return the maximum value from the portion that is considered average pooling return the average value from the portion that is considered okay just look at this this is the example or of the uh, example or demonstration of applying max pooling on two uh, on the volume of this uh, four cross four see here max pooling of two cross two is applied with the stripe two what do we mean by this first region of consideration is this first this region is considered what is the maximum of this maximum is six so it is taken out okay then what is the stride here stride is two so the second region is considered this it is shifted by two position what is the maximum of this two cross two region eight so eight is taken out then it, it is shifted by two position down what is shifted by two position down? Nothing is shifted here. Just region of consideration is uh, shifted by two position. Then you come here on this input once again, or on this region, once again, you apply two cross two pulling, you get this three. And the last part, once again, you apply two cross two pulling. This is an example of max pulling. See, this is the example of average pooling as well as max pooling. So here also we are applying 2 cross 2 max pooling with the stride 2. So if 2 cross 2 max pooling is applied, so 20 is taken out. If it is a 2 cross 2 average pooling, then what is the average of this? 12 plus 12 plus 20 plus 8. Average is 13. In some of the problem, max pooling is required. In some of the problem, average pooling is required. Question is that when you apply max pooling, when you apply average pooling, it depends on the problem to problem. Sometimes you are just interested in finding the dominating features. You are not at all interested in the other features. Then you go with max pooling. Sometimes you want to uh, get values from each and every features. That means you want to give weightage to all the features. Means you are not at all interested in ignoring all the non-important features. In that case, what you can do, you can go with the average kind of pullings. One more layer is there. Uh, this layer is known as dense or fully connected layer. Uh, all neurons in the layer is connected to uh, all the neurons in the previous layer. <clears throat> Now calculation of output volume. Previously we had seen that formula. What was that formula? Output width is equal to input width minus filter minus filter. Okay. Now we just change the formula slightly. Suppose if we are applying padding of zeros. Okay. So previously it was output width. Uh, sorry, input width. Then padding of zero is applied. So padding on this side as well as on the other side. That's why we write as two p. So if p is equal to 1, it means that one column of 0 is added over here as well as one column of 0 is added over here. So 5 is considered as 2 p. Previous, what is the width? 2, 3, 4, 5. Previously, it is, it is 5. After that, p is equal to 1. Effective width will become 7. Okay. 2, 2 columns of 0 
value is added to the left and two column ones of zero of zero is added. Then what will be the effective width? Five plus twice t plus t is equal to two, so this will be the nine. So w plus twice t is the width. Okay. After that we are uh, subtract enter size. That is perfectly fine. Divided by s. S is the stride. Okay. Divided by s was not affecting uh, in the previous uh, example because the stride is equal to one. It may also possible that the stride is non-unit. Means the stride is equal to two or stride is equal to three. In that case, okay, and you take the plus one. So effective formula by this W plus twice P minus F divided by S plus one. Okay, this is uh, one exercise that we will uh, cover over here. T. Uh, on this input, we apply uh, this input that we consider. 32 cross 32 cross 3. Okay. Then uh, activation size. Activation size is total how many? 2 by 3. It is 3. 2, 2 is involved over here because it is just an input. On this input, we apply first convolution. That is convolution 1. What is the filter size? <coughs> filter size is 5 cross 5. Stride is equal to 1. Are we applying any padding? No. So we are not applying any padding and the stride is one. Then what will happen is 32 cross 32 is getting transformed to 28 cross 28. How? 32 minus 5 plus 1. It is nothing but 28 cross 28. Okay. So the final output is 28 cross 28 cross 8. Total values is this 6272. And this is the number of parameters. Can you tell me what is this 8? Can you tell me what is this eight over here? See here, this 8 is nothing but the total number of filters that we are applying in this convolution one. Just look at this previous slide, right? this one. How many filters we are applying over here? Two filters. So the uh, output is 4 cross 4 cross 2. If we apply 3 filters, then it would be 4 cross 4 cross 3. If we apply 10 such filters, then the depth of the output is 4 cross 4 cross 10. Here also. We are getting this output 28 cross 28 cross 8. What does it indicate? It indicates that we were applying 8 such filters. We were applying 8 such filters in which convolution? In this convolution 1. Is it clear now? So 28 cross 28 cross 8 means total how many values? 28 multiplied by 28 multiplied by 8. It is nothing but 6 to 7. This is very simple. Calculate the number of parameters over here. Now see. How do you calculate the number of parameters? Parameters are is equal to weight and biases. Okay. So we we'll just look at this. Total number of parameters is equal to what? We apply 5 cross 5 filter. We first compute the number of weights for one filter. Okay. Suppose this 5 cross 5 filter is applied on this input. How how many channels will be there in the input or how many channels will be there in the filter? See here, this filter is applied on this input. Number of channels in the filter is equal to the output or in the input. So in this filter also three channels are there. So first five cross five is for the first channel. Second five cross five weights is for the second channel. Third five cross five weights is for the third channel. How many weights are there? 75 weights are there. 25 weights for the first channel, 25 weights for the second channel, and 25 weights for the third channel. 25 weights for the first filter. Along with this 75 weights, one bias will be associated with this. 
so total how many parameters are associated with a single filter 75 plus 1 it is nothing but 76 how many filters we are applying over here we are applying eight such filters that is number of filter of parameters equal to 76 multiplied by 8 i am also writing this in the chat box just look at this expression and if doubt is there then you can ask 75 plus 1 Just look at this expression. This expression is clear to all. Now we can further expand this. Uh, Dr. Tasar, are you still no. facing any problem in writing it on the screen? No, I'm fine. It's fine? Okay. Actually, I was just writing in chat box, like how many parameters are there. Yes, yes, got that, got that on the chat. Okay. So, Okay, one question is there like uh, repetition of out number of again. I, I, I explained this. See, this five cross five filter is applied on the input. Channel, the number of channels in the input is three. Okay, so, so five cross five filter. So, what is applied on this 32 cross 32 cross three? Okay, so in this filter also. Yeah. So first 25 weights corresponding to so five weights corresponding to third channel. On top of that, we are having one bias. Okay. So total involved with first filter 76. How many filters we are over here? This is eight. So it is nothing but six zero eight. I have written uh, that expression in the chat box. Just look at this. Is it clear? 25 weights for first channel, 25 channel, 25 weights. The channel 26 are there corresponding to first filter. How many filters we are applying? 8. That's why it is multiplied by 8, and it is nothing but the 608. 608 are the number of parameters associated with the convolution one. Is it clear now? Okay. After this, we just apply this pooling layer. Just look at this now. So 28 cross 28 cross 8. On this uh, input, we apply 2 cross 2 pooling or uh, specifically 2 cross 2 max pooling. So this 28 cross 28 is getting transformed to 14 cross 14. See the input channel, the depth of the input is 8 and the depth of the output is also 8. What do we mean by this? The depth is not getting changed in pooling operation. Okay. The depth is not getting changed in the pooling operation. If you multiply this 14 multiplied by 14 multiplied by 8, it is nothing but 1568. And in pooling, no parameter is associated with pooling operation. Just look at this. This was the pooling operation. See, this is pooling. So, 
no parameters are involved here no weight no biases is there just a extraction of maximum or the extraction of the average okay so this is pulling after that we apply one more convolution operation now you calculate this once again we apply 5 cross 5 convolution okay 5 cross 5 filter is applied on which volume it is applied on this 14 comma 14 comma 8 on 14 14 8 if we apply 5 cross 5 filter okay then how many channels are there in the filter how many channels would be there in filter the number of channels in filter is equal to number of channels in the filter. okay so the number of channels in the filter is is equal to 8 okay. how many weights are associated with one filter 25 25 multiplied by 8 so total 200 200 weights are associated with one filter and more bias so this is 201 201 parameters are associated with one filter how many filters we are applying over here Six. this is 16 we have seen such filter so 201 multiplied by 16 is equal to 3216 3216 is it clear On this input, 10 cross 10 cross 16, so 10 cross 10 only is getting transformed into is going to change. Okay. 400 is there, 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 16. No parameters are involved over here. After that, these fully connected layers are there. In this fully connected layer, 120 neurons are there. These 120 neurons are connected in a fully connected, uh, fully connected fashion to the these 400 neurons. Okay, so total how many weights and how many biases will be there? 120 multiplied by 400. One multiplied by 400. These many weights are there. And how many biases? Just consider that this is input and this is output. So in output, how many neurons are there? 120. One bias is associated with each and every neuron. So total how many bias will be there? 120 bias will be there. So 48,000 weights are there and 120 bias will be there. So if you sum this, then it is 48,000 plus 120, 48,000, 120 are the total number of parameters associated with this fully connected layer FC3. Then we apply one more fully connected layer. In this 84 neurons are there. The 84 number of parameters is equal to 84 multiplied by 120 plus 84 and 0164. That lastly, softmax is the softmax which are integrizing is neurons in the final layer. These 10 neurons are connected to the full connected fashion of these 84 numbers. 10 multiplied by 84 plus 10, it is nothing but 850. So these are the total number of parameters associated with these entire architecture. 608 with the convolution 1, 3216 with the convolution 2, these many parameters with F3, parameter with FC4, and these many parameters with E max. What is our aim? Softmax. What is our aim is that we want the optimum value of each of these parameters. We want that optimum value of optimum value of these parameters. Is it clear or any doubt or any clarification on this? Okay. Now let us generalize this convolution operation. Suppose we apply any convolution operation on uh, which is having size w1, h1, d1. w1 is the width of the input, h1 is the uh, height of uh, height of the input, and d1 is the depth of the input. Okay. On this volume, we apply these filters in which a filters are applied. Filter size is five. The filter size is f cross f. The stride is equal to S and the amount of zero padding is equal to P. Okay, based on that, we calculate the output volume. The output volume is defined by this W2, H2, and D2. Width of the output 
height of the output, depth of the output. How do you calculate W, S2, W? We already know the formula. What is that formula? W minus F plus 1. Okay. In which case, when we are not applying any padding and the stride is 1. But when we apply, we may apply padding and the stride is not unity. This is the formula W1 plus twice P. This will be the effective width minus F is there divided by S plus 1. Similarly, H2, H1 minus F plus twice P divided by S plus 1 and D2 is equal to K. Means depth of the output is equal to the number of filters that we are applying. So D2 is equal to K. The last two lines that is very important that needs to be understood. First one with parameter sharing. What do we mean by parameter sharing? Those 3 cross 3 filter or that 5 cross 5 filter is revolving over the input. Okay. It is known as parameter sharing. We are not changing the parameter. Just look at this. This. See here. These parameters. These are the parameters. These are the parameters and it is same across all these regions. Okay. We are not changing the parameter depending on the region. It is known as parameter sharing. Parameter sharing it introduce how many ways f cross f is there and this f cross f filter is applied on which volume on this volume. How many channels are there in this filter? D1 channels will be there. F cross f weights corresponding to one channel, f cross f cross d1 weights corresponding to all the channels. Okay, and let's look at this f cross f cross d1. These many weights are there per filter. How many filters we are applying? Okay, such filters. That's why this entire expression is getting multiplied by k. These many weights are there, and how many bias? One bias is associated with one filter. How many filters we are applying? K. So k such biases will be there. How we define the parameters? Parameters is equal to weight and biases. So these many weights and these many biases. Just look at this. F cross F cross D1 cross K plus k you can take k as common it is nothing but f cross f cross d1 plus 1 as we were doing in the previous calculation f cross f cross d1 plus 1 okay and then finally finally it is getting multiplied by k the last line in the output volume the dh depth slice of size w2 cross h2 is the result of performing a valid convolution of the dh filter over the input volume with a stride of S and then offset by the dth bias. What do we mean by this? For this, we need to look at this slide. This one. See, this is the result. First one. This is the result of applying filter one on this input. And second one, this, this is the result of applying filter two on this input. The same thing that is there. W2 cross H2 is the result of applying this filter is filter 1 because this is the first channel in the output. This is the result of applying first filter on the input. This is the second channel in the output. The second channel in the output is generated by applying second filter on this input. Okay. Same thing is written over here. Now we'll read once again. Dth depth slice of output. What is the size of out that slice? It's W2 cross H2. First W2 cross H2, second W2 cross H2, third W2 cross H2 and so on. Is the result of performing a valid convolution of the DH filter. It may be first filter, it may be second filter. If it is first filter, then it is placed as a first channel in the output. If it is second filter, then it is placed as a second channel in the output and then offset by the dth bias. This was the generalization of convolution operation. After that, the generalization of pooling operation. Just look at this. When we accept this volume, W1 cross H1 cross D1, and we apply this pooling. In pooling, we write this as a not filter size, but it is just represented by F. Is nothing but the in consideration. Okay, region in consideration. If it is a one dimensional, then it is simply F. If it is a two dimensional, then it is F cross F and the stride is one S. Now see, you compute W2, H2 and D2. W2 is computed as W1 minus F divided by S plus. 
and H2 is also computed as H1 minus F divided by S plus 1. D2 is equal to D1 means when we apply pooling layer, then the depth is not getting changed. That's why D2 is equal to D1. And it is a zero parameter universal associated with pooling operation as it computes the fixed function of the input. For pooling layer, it is not common to pair input using so padding. What do we mean by this? It means that the paddings are generally applicable for convolution operation. For uh, pooling, generally we do not apply any padding of zeros. Two main reasons are there behind applying this convolution operation. So very first was this parameter sharing in which the same filter is revolving over the input. This is known as parameter sharing. And the second one is sparsity of connections. It means that uh, uh, very few regions is connected or very few portion of the previous layer is connected to the neuron. This is known as sparsity of connection. If we compare this uh, with dense ne uh, neural network, in dense neural network, the neuron is connected to all the neurons in the previous layer. In comparison with dense neural network, it is considered as a sparse neural network. Okay. Now we will just look at the summary of convolutional neural network. The very first point is that uh, it provides an input image into the convolutional network. Okay, Next, the parameters. Okay, as uh, you asking the question on this, like uh, now how we decide the parameters? Like uh, you need to decide what is the filter size, what is the stride, uh, what will be the padding, how many filters we are applying. We need to decide this. Then perform the convolution on the image and uh, just apply ReLU uh, as a non-linear activation function. It is not mandatory. Generally, it is used as ReLU. Then perform pooling operation for the dimensionality reduction and then flatten the output and feed into a fully connected layer. Lastly, the output uh, of the classes are used as an activation function. Then finally, we perform the classification. Okay, if you are having any doubt, then you can ask. Actually, I need to also demonstrate that uh, the CNN, but uh, I think it will take uh, 15 to 20 minutes for that demonstration. Ma'am, can we continue that demonstration in uh, tomorrow's lecture? Uh, yes, it can be done if you want. Yeah, because uh, all the things will get clear in that uh, demonstration, like uh, how we can apply filter size, how we can decide the number of filters. So if I take one if program on CNN, minutes, then all the things will be uh, If it can be done in 10 minutes, you can extend it. Otherwise, you can do it tomorrow along with reinforcement learning. Okay, fine. So we will cover it uh, tomorrow. Fine, fine, fine. Okay then, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Kasif, for the for the nice session, and it, it really took all the technicalities and uh, also the uh, mathematical details also of CNN. Thank you so much. I hope everybody has understood those mathematical uh, explanations because that is very much required if you are looking for any uh, research problem to be solved. Because just application of neural networks using Python will not be a research problem solution. You have to actually get into the mathematical uh, uh, solutions for that, and then only you uh, a, a good research paper will be published. Thank you so much, Dr. Tarsif, for the valuable inputs, and uh, you can continue with this uh, tomorrow with reinforcement learning. Okay, sure. Thank you, Dr. Tarsif. Uh, we'll break here for 15 minutes, and at 3.15, uh, Dr. Santosh Viparthi would join in from IIT Guwahati.
So please don't miss that session. And he would be talking about object identification. Uh, he would be using the concepts of CNN itself. So please don't miss that uh, class. It would be an implementation of what has been discussed right now. It would be a very useful session. Thank you so much once again. And uh, we'll uh, we'll join back at 3.50. I'm not closing the meeting as of now. And uh, the next session would be at 3.50.